Do you have trouble maintaining focus? <laughs> Do you, like, get 2.5k damage and then decide you've got to kill one of the last blokes by running him over in a Dacia? Ah, oh, bad things happen to good people. Well, hello there, humans of these other things, wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome aboard the love train. Today, we're going to be doing something a touch different than normal. This is going to be a longer video than usual. It's going to be about nearly 18 minutes. Uh, so, ooh, sucks to be you. Um, no, I get asked all the time in the comment sections, can you please do a video of just gameplay where you talk about what's going on and why you're doing things? And so I thought I would. Uh, because heaven's above. It's not like I haven't done a lot of things that you guys have asked, and here you go. Congratulations if this is what you're wanting, because you're going to get it. Uh, this is a standard drop at Paradise Resort. Now, um, one of the things about this video in particular, uh, and the day it was shot, is that I wasn't doing very well. Uh, I'd just done a live stream, and I was just what you might call it having a bad day. Hey, I, uh, for the first time that I can recall, I'd actually dropped rating in TPP solo versus squads uh, down to diamond something uh, in my quest to get to crown quickly and efficiently. And that really annoyed me. Uh, and it was because I was just, I just wasn't hitting my straps. Um, but one of the things you're gonna see here is some of the routes that I run. Now I, I'm regular and I, I hear audio to the Northeast of me now. One of the things I do in Paradise Resort and Boot Camp and everywhere else is I take to the skies as often as possible. So I'm expecting that to be above me. And so I set up for the actual shot and a guy who would be overlooking up there. And that's exactly what I get, which is great. Now I'm using the QBZ95. I like the QBZ a lot. I particularly love this skin. But I, uh, I do prefer the M416 at the moment. I've really come back to the M416 as a, a go-to weapon, even solo versus squad because I love the efficiency of the gun. It hits what you aim at all the time. And uh, that's not to say that most of the other 5.56 ARs aren't excellent as well, because this is very, very close to the M416, but it's just not quite as good. Now, you might have seen someone flash past the stairs, and you certainly would have heard the gunfire there to my north. Uh, so what I'm doing is, this is another standard route for me. Uh, and this guy has no idea where I am. It's very hard to see someone up here particularly. It's a uh, very well hidden area. Now, he peeks out and gets shot at, but he doesn't really see me. He just feels the, the bullets go by. He wasn't there long enough for me to hit him, and as a response, he wasn't there long enough to actually see me. So I throw a smoke, and then I've done this that many times, but people will go on the roof because they expect you to be down, and they don't really expect you to be waiting for them. And that is something that I can't tell you how many kills I've got from that position there, just aiming at that area on the roof. I've done videos before where that's popped up as an issue. Uh, I pick up the three times and I've got an S12K. I'm gonna get rid of that for the QBU, which is a, just a fantastic DMR, and especially effective when you're in uh, solo versus squads. Uh, I was being watched by a few people on the Discord server, some of the patrons, and JJ Axel at one point, I swap it out for a, a car 98 k and JJ's like, why are you doing that? Why are you running a car 98 k And I'm like, because I'm angry, and I want to headshot people. But it's it's Sanok, and there's a uh, there's a fog, like we're in a weather pattern, so the car 98 k is kind of pointless, and it's I eventually end up swapping that out, so I'm running, I think, M416 and uh, Beryl M762 by the end of this. Now, I've heard some gunfire, and I'm wondering where that's coming from. What I'm actually going to do is, again, run the sky route here. This is the guy that we just cleared, a uh, AB Legends crate. We're going to get that um, compensator for AR, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to swap out for the M416. Happy days. We've got a, a red dot. Now, I love using the red dot. Uh, the red dot is outstanding because it gives you a really big field of view, but increases your ADS speed. There is a genuine bonus to the ADS speed using a red dot, and that is... Um, that's a real benefit. And if you get in the habit of ADSing uh, on those mid-range shots with guns like the M416 in particular, you're going to uh, really reap the benefits of having that red dot there. So, you know, you can use whatever you want. I'll use a holographic too. What I generally like to run is a three times scope and a red dot in tandem. So I'll swap those backwards and forwards depending on the situation. And you're going to see that pop in just a little while as we uh, exit boot camp. But before we do, we're just going to finish up looting and rooting and tooting and shooting over here. And then we move towards the area where we we landed originally, which is really, this is my standard route for boot camp. And uh, I've heard something over in that direction. So immediately I start scoping and poking. There we go. 
Someone has made a big noise. Now, that's a real person. Taseko D. I saw that on the kill feed. He's killed someone and knocked them with an AKM. So, remember the first guy that I shot? Uh, he was running this route. If you jump before you get to that edge there and then you jump again, you can get up there without having to press the climb button. Now, I'm not too upset here about having to press the climb button. I'm trying to just hang back on this edge, the very, very edge. And Taseko is actually looking for me, but... I wasn't really peeking and showing my whole body off, so it was very, very easy there. Now, we're going to kill a couple of bots, um, and I won't show you that. I'm just going to show you we've killed the bots, and we're exiting boot camp. Uh, exiting Paradise Resort. We're heading down towards boot camp. Now, you might have seen the video I did on positioning, and uh, positioning 101 that I dropped actually yesterday. So, this is... Um, very much a route that I run. And a lot of the positioning that I do is is based on these routes, like knowing good positions. Now, I'm seeing a lot of stuff going on in the kill feed, and I just saw some gunshots that were fully automatic to my southwest. There's a bloke called Hand dominating the kill feed there. But I'm not seeing any more gunshots when uh, they're going up. So it's not him that's going to be pushing up through here. It's someone else. And as I'm coming down here to the south, I'm going to spot a squad to my right, uh, that is going to pop to the to my west, and I'm going to engage those guys. Now I don't, I don't see all of them at once. There's the first guy, so we get the knock, and then we thirst him up. And as we finish thirsting him, his mate turns up, and we knock him. And then I strafe out. I'm looking for the third party, possibly the fourth. So there's another guy at the base, and we're going to hit a heal there. We're going to thirst this bloke up first. So we've cleared two members of the squad. There's at least one more left. Oh, hang on. I think that is the fourth member of the squad. So I've got two guys left in this squad. And they're going to be pretty aggressive. And you're going to see I'm going to switch, as we were talking about earlier, switching from the three times to the red dot in just a second. And as we go back here, uh, they're going to probably push me. And I don't like that position. I like to, to change my position. I switch back to the red dot for this particular area here in case it becomes close quarters. And I'm expecting maybe a flank move. And someone's fired just there. So that's an area of denial, Molly. That's to stop him from coming through. Gives me a... A few seconds just to come over here, change to a three times, and see if I can get a scope flank shot on the guys that were just down there. Nope, no good. Pushing back around here. I'm expecting to see them, and I switch back to the CQC monster, the red dot. Now, they're pre-firing that area there. I'm happy days with that. At least I know where they are. They're in a choke point. If I can get both of them in this choke point, more the better. Uh, more the merrier. Okay, there's me... Now, I was hoping this molly would go through the window, but I miss it. Uh, and the reason I was hoping it go through the window is because a lot of people will go into there to strafe and pre fire Now, there is our target. This is interesting. That's sky black that we knock, right? And you're going to see in the kill feed in a sec. And I didn't notice this when I was playing, but I thought he was pre-firing to stop me. But as I'm hearing that gunfire, I know that if he's gunfiring at something, he's not reviving his teammate and he hasn't had time to hit a full heal. So I get that heal off quick push back out and immediately apply pressure and we clear sky black and sky white in that one little instance. The key thing there was the speed with which we push the heel. A lot of people will muck around and be indecisive. Think of it like this. If you can pump a heel as soon, and you saw it happen twice there. Once uh, when I thirsted up the second member and I was behind this rock just in front of me, I immediately went to a heel and I could still move like a meter either side when I was getting hit. So as I got hit, I just moved to the left and the heel covered off on the damage I took. And the second time, as soon as I got around that corner, I started hitting a heel. Now, the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to push you and you have to engage in a gunfight. But if you muck around and don't heal and they push you and you have to engage in a gunfight, you're going to be screwed anyway. If you can just get 10 seconds worth of time, then that does a world of good and it can allow you to get back into the gunfight very, very effectively. So there's still 10 people left, uh, me being one of them, and we're just basically putting our stuff together. And you can see I've got a cube, I've got a, an M416 and a K98. And the K98 is, it's so pointless here. And I'm just adjusting my backpack here, not sitting still, moving around, looking for targets while I'm doing this, just in case. Uh, and the M416, it runs, Sadoc really lends itself basically to double AR, right? You can run an M416 with a three times scope on it and a QBZ, a, um, a barrel M762 with a red dot on it. And pff, voila, you're covered off on close and mid range. And as we move in here, we hear footsteps. So immediately switch back to the close quarters and I'm waiting for that door to open so I can go through and strafe. 
And a big part of this is ammo conservation. Right, so we get the knock. Outside. Hit a reload. And then we're back in. We've got a full clip now. So that guy's just gone on a reload and he's pushed back in. So, yeah. Ammo conservation is really important. Even if he had a push us, we had 16 left in the clip. And uh, he had to make a hard choice between his partner and pushing on me. And he'd already taken damage because we strafed out. And in the end, that was enough. Now... Those two take it down to eight. Seven to get through, and they're actually going to pop. There's a, a bunch of stuff going to pop behind me back towards Paradise Resort, which is a surprise. They must have rotated through, possibly from the north. I don't know, but that's where it's going to pop. So I'm going to just do a little bit of thinking here, and then we're going to roll back out towards Paradise. And the reason being, you can see where the circle is. I'd be a lunatic to travel towards boot camp right now in the, out in that open. Far better off finding a position where I can stay strong and actually engage targets on my terms. Um, I mean, it's the old Sun Tzu thing. Never fight the enemy on uh, on his terms or on the ground of his choosing. You don't, you want to fight the enemy on the, the position that's best for you. So I'm moving across the road as always, like cover to cover, cover to cover, cover to cover. There's always a best practice way of doing things. And this is something I do fundamentally do a lot of is I will run cover to cover. I'll always try to put myself in a position where there's at least some advantage to what I'm doing. And we hear our amigos up top here. Now there is someone on top of that hill. And I'm expecting them, if not to push down into this area here, to at least uh, have an overlook on me. So I'm quite worried about that. And why, why wait though and just sit still? I may as well loot, may as well look for a fresh vest, keep an eye out. Uh, at this stage of the game, everyone's expecting someone to be in every house, right? So I change up uh, to the QB, the barrel M762, sorry, and get rid of that, um, a little bit of that 5.56, because really, I mean, 180 rounds of 5.56 right now is, that's enough to win the game. Change up the uh, compensator and the vertical foregrip to the barrel, because the M762 needs that vertical foregrip a lot more. <laughs> Then an M416 needs a uh, vertical foregrip. Flash hide will do for the M4, won't hurt it. And uh, yeah, now we're we're in the game and we've got our, our in-game loadout. We're basically in a position, if we don't win it from here, it's our fault, okay? Uh, six left to go. There's at least one up top. It sounded like it might have been a couple, um, but we're not certain. So I get myself some distance. I am worried about those guys. I'm hearing footsteps and things all around up the top, but they're not close enough to register on the minimap. So it means they're at least 20 meters away. So I am a little bit worried that they might be popping on the rooftops there. So I, I keep an eye out for that and then I switch out and this is pretty shit by me. Um, he's being very elusive, but I swap out straight to the barrel on the red dot and that finishes him off. And then I'm worried about the guys behind me. So I, there's, there could be someone shooting behind me and that's why I'm moving constantly. Um, I see another target up there. He's tapping me with an M416. I'm happy to spray. And then I'm going to get across. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's funny, isn't it? How you just <laughs> you just prep for these things and voila, it turns up. There's the guys behind me. Uh, but I was expecting something because at this stage of the game, if you are firing, everyone knows where you are. I'm going to put that down just in case. I don't know. They might have an AWM or something along those lines. An AWM and a tap out will be enough. And I'm just going to run behind that smoke, keeping it between me and where I last took shots from and get into this house. And whoa, there's a bloody QBU there. So you get back into the house, change into the vest that we hooked out last time. And we're going to hit an adrenaline syringe. The adrenaline shot, that'll get me back up to full health and keep me rolling while I'm dealing with this dude. And this is actually, I'm going to close the door so that they can't shoot me from behind. I'm inside the circle. All well and good. Now, if the circle comes to us here, this is going to be great. If it doesn't come to us, it could be nasty. Now, this bloke is going to have to push into me. I'm actually using the guys on the other side of the road here. If he pushes on the outside, they should pretty comfortably have shots at him. If he pushes straight through, then I'm going to deal with him one-on-one. -on -one. Now, this is kind of crazy. I don't want to get in that window too long. Um, and that's when I realize, yeah, there's no one over the other side of the road that's shooting in here. So... It's just me and this dude. I don't know where those guys on the other side of the road are. And I'm really worried that that's a single on the other side of the road and that it's a triple 
coming my way here, which is not good news. So I can only hear one set of footsteps though. And this is a funny, funny grin. I'm going to chuck a grin around this corner, right? As I go to chuck the grin, this dude pops and I literally just hurl the grenade at the wall. Um, oh, hello. Now that could easily have just rebounded in on me. And then I'd pre-fire and get the pre-fire kill. He had to Barney out of that... Uh, of that grenade to get outside and then I pushed and it all worked out perfectly but that grenade that was not intentional that was just complete RNG Jesus that was ridiculous uh the fact that it it landed so perfectly right towards the doorway there and forced him to leave the room uh was great but let's be honest I did not throw that grenade with the intent of that happening that was just get back behind the wall and let the grenade go and it, it happened to be perfect uh so Three people left. They're probably all one squad. There was gunshots on the other side of the road. And unfortunately for me, it's gone on the other side of the road. I mean, what are you going to do? This is this is not an ideal situation, but it's the situation you got, so you do your best with it. Going to push across and be as aggressive as I can. And they, they've done something quite odd here. They do something which I think is quite bad. They spread out, okay? They spread out across quite a wide front. And it gives me an opportunity to actually engage them one at a time or at least i think it's one at a time there's three there now there's someone shooting at me from the right with an m24 over here i'm moving around trying not to give him an easy headshot um he's going to pop in just a second there it is and that is from the northwest so i'm immediately pushing out towards the edge i'm thinking that's where their squad is to the northwest but lo and behold as i'm charging up here i start taking fire from a much closer area and i see a guy right next to the rocks there's one this is really odd because they've got to be the same squad and they're straight ahead straight ahead from me don't know where he is he's behind that rock somewhere again the car 98 is going to be pointless here i'm looking for a, a three times scope i'm not stopping because of that m24 basically using the trees whatever cover i can get a hold of it's got to be around there somewhere Still looking, still looking, still looking. There's his helmet, there's his helmet. Okay, so they've got to be over there, right? This is where I blow it. This is where I blow it because they are not over there. Where they are is a guy, last guy is actually on the right. He's on the other side of the road over there. Like, he's he's miles away. You ready? He's on my right. Very frustrating. It's like, all the way over there. It's the last member of the squad. He was on the other side of the road. Like, this is one of the things that blows my mind is how often I'll actually lose because the enemy kind of makes a mistake. Like if they had have all been together there, I would have had next to no chance of clearing them because they went to single coverage across like a 300 square meter field. Um, I had a very good chance of winning the game, but because the last guy was just so badly out of position, I didn't expect it. And that was the thing that screwed me. And that happens to me so often with players that for some reason make what appear to be really bad, poor positional choices, but they are the choices that you just don't think are going to happen. Like they're, they're in the wrong place and that happens to be the right place because you're expecting someone to have an overlook on their partner or be next to each other or within cooey of each other instead of taking rocks 100 meters apart and seeing how they go. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Something very, very different, and I uh, I apologize for the length, but hey, you get that on the big jobs. Until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.